Welcome to this presentation on the torsion auto pad installation. We've got here a, a typical pedestrian gate. We're going to tackle it and technicians working together here. What you see is a gate that doesn't have a header. For the auto pad to be installed, it needs a header over the gate. And that's not so difficult to resolve. And here we're showing you careful measurement of the uh, width and height. We're putting on a two by five header uh, with verticals that match the posts. Uh, this can be done with square tubing, obviously, which is the most convenient, but even with a chain link gate or round tubing um, using a stiffener plate. Here is simply good uh, structural welding out in the field. The second piece of the retrofit is to put a bar across the top of the gate uh, or build up the frame, which is another alternative. In this case, we're just putting a piece of flat bar across it uh, that the arm from the auto ped will. Uh, attached to to move the gate open and closed. So here you see we've got the header in place now and a uh, pickup across the top of the gate and we're ready to go. Now we're unpacking the auto ped which comes in a cardboard box as you see well protected for shipping and we recommend that you just take each component out of the box and lay it out on a piece of cardboard organized and ready for the installation. This includes unpacking the auto pet itself and removing the inner plate, uh, laying each piece out separately. tools ready to go, including obviously an Allen wrench. The list of tools is included in the uh, installation instructions. So here we are, we have everything that comes in the box. You've got the back plate, this is what attaches to the header. You've got the guts of the unit, which is the controller, the gearbox, and the motor uh, mounted on a plate. You have the template. This is a mounting template in paper that you'll see how it's used. This is the spindle that lowers the shaft uh, where it picks up on the gate, the installations, the cover, nice stainless steel housing uh, made to be NEMA 4 uh, design. This is a three position switch. Here's the standard arm and we're ready to go. There are a couple of other, several other uh, components, options that you may or may not need. One is the positive stop. Um, this is prevents the gate from being over opened and mounts inside the operator. Another component is a 30 millimeter uh, spindle. The one that comes standard is 20 millimeter, but if the pickup on the top of the gate is more than two and a quarter inches, you'll want a larger spindle. The third is the track arm assembly. Standard with the operator comes a standard arm, which you saw a moment ago, but this is a track arm, which is used in applications where the gate is pulling underneath the operator. As you can see, there's a track and then a glide and a single arm that moves in back and forth in that glide to pull the gate open. This can also be used in a push application. All right, here we are now. Our technician standing up on a ladder. It's a one-man job, one-person job to put this in place. 
and you can see that the operator can either be mounted for a left hand or a right hand simply by turning it over. Similarly, the mounting template, which you see there, can be used for either the left or the right-handed installation. So you tape that up in place on the header, and now you're ready to go. The key is to align it, of course, with the left hand or the hinge, as you can see has been done here. Now you're uh, tapping to put a, a marker, score a marker where you're gonna drill in, and here you're drilling in um, to the four points where the operator will mount to. Now you're raising up the back housing and attaching using, in this case, drill and tap screws four screws are holding it in place. It's very important that you install it level, so that's something to check right here. After years of this pushing open and pulling closed, um, if it's not level, you're going to see unnecessary wear on hinges and on shafts and on the operator itself. So that's something, a key step. And now you're attaching the a back plate to the, um, to the drive unit. And this is four screws that are ready to go. They're Allen wrench heads and with those in place now, everything is mechanically in place and you're ready to go to the next step, which is to attach the operator to the gate itself. So now you have the arm, you have that 20 millimeter spindle, and you have the bolt that attaches them. The key measurement here is that you want the arm for a pushing application like this one is to be mounted four inches from the center line of that of the spindle shaft coming down. So our technician has marked that off and is now installing the spindle, screwing it in but not too tight. So it's loose and easy to manipulate while you're finishing the installation of the arm. You've loosened the uh, track slide of the arm so that it's easy to manipulate. And then the first thing you do is mount the shoe at that point four inches over from the shaft. Once that's secure, as you're seeing is happening right here, then you are establishing a 90 degree, so you want it to come in perpendicular to the gate. And with the arm going perpendicular into that shoe, you then tighten up the, um, the brackets that hold the shaft. And then finally, you go ahead and fully tighten up the, the spindle shaft going up into the gearbox. Now you just give it a me mechanical push open, push close, make sure everything's moving smoothly, that the arm is level, and there's no binding. Now we're going to get into the electrical. So the first thing to do is to mount the three position switch, or optionally we offer a key switch, which you saw uh, demonstrated right there. So that's just... Um, slides up and snaps in place the three position switch you see over there on the left. Um, now we're removing the cover which helps with the environmental integrity of the unit. We remove that cover and start to uh, wire in the 
three position switch. All of the instructions on where these switches and which, um, which punch down uh, blocks you're using is described in the manual. We have a, a, a rubber gasket there, which is helping to prevent any moisture from getting into the operator. So you just slide through that. Once that switch is in place, now it's time to add power. Notice that we're knocking out only the knockouts that need to be removed for the installation. Uh, don't knock out any others because that will lessen the uh, environmental water and dust protection designed into the unit. And never drill and poke holes in the cover itself. Only use the knockouts that are provided. We provide them in the back coming in from the header if you want or from the sides as we're using in this installation. So now we're putting in the, the ground and positive and negative wires for the power installation, which goes into that side um, punch in on the side of the operator. Now we've just turned back on the power and we are ready to go. We go into programming mode and you can see using the toggle switch there, we're able to click through the programming steps. And then when you've chosen the, um, the parameters that you want, you push that button in. And then finally you go through teach, okay. And now it goes through a countdown um, and it now is up opening itself. And it will open all the way up and then come back and it's it's learning its limits right now. Um, when it closes, it will close up against the positive stop in the closed position. You've established, as you saw him doing earlier, a 102 degree open position. Now we need to confirm, and this is according to ANSI 156.19, that the pressure of that gate before it reverses back open is 15 foot-pounds or less. And here you see we've established it at 15 foot-pounds. The technician on site will want to be familiar with these ANSI 156.19 low energy operator standards. Here's a critical table which is establishing what the velocity, so what the speed of that gate opening should be. And in this case, given its size and weight, it should open in 4.5 seconds or slower, no faster than 4.5 seconds. So that's something that's set in the programming based on velocity. A knowing act device is necessary as part of the safety of this unit. And that's what was just being installed on the wall there. In California, it's required to have one of those 36 inch long. Um, in other parts of the country, it can just be a single push button. The one we're installing is a transmitter receiver style, so wireless. And so we're mounting the receiver in the section of the, of the auto pad where there's lots of room for mounting other devices if necessary. Because it's a stainless steel housing, you're gonna to wanna to run your uh, antenna out the side and we provide a little gasket there. You cut a small hole in it, just a pinhole, and that will um, again protect it from moisture getting in. Everything's now ready to go, it's programmed. The receiver's been wired in, and we remount the plastic cover over the control board and take the housing now. One final knockout needs to be taken out. That's what slides over the shaft going down. But again, only remove the, the knockout necessary for that shaft, not on the other side. There's one on the left, there's one on the right. Uh, the screws that hold that cover on are mounted are, are, can't fall out. They're mounted permanently in the operator. And then a final step to comply with ANSI is to put on the sticker. It should be about 50 inches from the ground and in an obvious location. So thanks very much for watching this. We're now all set. Look how handsome that operator is. Ready to go.
now you see you push that button. It's wirelessly communicating, opening up the gate in that 4.5 seconds, which is what's required. And then we've set the reversing to the 15 foot-pounds, so you see how light and gentle it is as it opens. Thanks very much for watching. For more information, visit the Torsion website.